All right, in this lesson, we're going to continue looking at optimization problems and investigating objective functions as far as how they apply to solution regions. What we learned in the previous lesson, and I'll just review it quickly, is that objective functions, it was the cost in this case, tend to be maximized or minimized. The maximum objective function was right here, this black point here, if you want to look at that lesson, and the minimum was either going to be the blue or the red dot, and we discovered based on the objective function here, uh, that the minimum was the blue point. So in other words, functions, objective functions are maximized or minimized in the corners, which is what we're finding. <clears throat> so we're going to look at one more problem. If you're my student and you have your study guide out, this uh, solution region is already in front of you, but I'm going to show you how to develop it uh, just in case you need to do a problem in its entirety. Um, so here is the problem. It says a vending machine sells juice and pop. So what I have here is that the variables are juice, J is juice, P is pop, and here are the constraints. The machine holds at most 240 cans of drinks. So that would be this. Juice plus pop is less than or equal to 240. If you were to graph that uh, as far as the boundary line goes, so your boundary <clears throat> would be where juice plus pop is equivalent to 240. So if you put juice is equal to zero, you'll get P is equal to 240. So that would be right here. And if you put P is equal to zero, you'd get J is equal to 240. So your boundary line would be that line right there. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and if it was less than or equal to, so up to 240 or at most 240 cans of drinks, this would be the solution region or all the combinations that are up to or at most 240 cans of drinks. If you weren't doing this mathematically, the boundary would be just give me two combinations where it's exactly 240 cans and this you'd come up with the same two points or any two points, maybe 120 and 120. Uh, that, as long as you have two points on the boundary, you're fine. So that's the introduction as far as how that uh, inequality would be represented. <clears throat> Next part says sales from the vending machine show that at least two cans of juice are sold for each can of pop. So juice is more than or equal to twice the amount of pop. That's a difficult inequality to come up with. So what you could do if you didn't know how to come up with the inequality is tell me two points where there's exactly two times or exactly two cans of juice for each can of pop. So exactly two cans of juice for each can of pop. <clears throat> so here is an example. That's exactly two cans of juice for each can of pop because there's 60 juices and 30 pops. Uh, here would be another one. That's exactly two cans of juice for every pop because it's 120 juices and 60 pops, and that's twice as many. So that would be your boundary line if you were not doing this mathematically. If you were doing this mathematically and knew how to come up with that, uh, you may do this. <clears throat> your boundary is where J is equivalent to 2P, and if you put J is equal to 0, you'd have... 0 is equal to 2p, and if you divide it by 2, you'd have p is equal to 0, so that's this point. And if you put p is equal to 0, you would end up getting, getting j is equal to 2 times 0, which is also 0. So you'd have one point on the boundary, which means you need to choose another point. So if we chose p was equal to 30, for example, we would have j is equal to 2 times 30, which is 60. And that point, p30 and j60, is right here. So whether you're doing this mathematically or not, you would get the exact same boundary line. So as long as you can determine any two points where there's exactly twice as many cans of juice as pop, you have a boundary line. And there's our boundary line. Now, uh, which side of that boundary line needs to be shaded? Well, just take a test point, for example. So maybe ask yourself, is this point here, which is 60 of each, so this is 60 juices and 60 pops, is that at least two cans of juice for every can of pop? And the answer is no. That's exactly the same amount of juice as pop. It's not at least twice as many. So that's not a solution, which means the opposite side of that boundary line is your solution. So what you're seeing on the page in front of you is the solution region that I've identified for you. So your solution region is this black outline triangle that I am drawing right now. Okay, but that's how that was come up with. Okay, but the focus here is the objective function and kind of predicting uh, different things. Now what it says next in the question, it says each can of juice sells for $1 and each can of pop sells for $1.25. 
create a model that could be used to determine the maximum revenue from the vending machine. So maximum revenue, that's a, maximum is an important word. That means that that's your objective. Your objective is to maximize the revenue. And the objective function, the revenue from cans of pop and cans of juice, would be this. The revenue is $1 for every juice plus $1.25 for every pop. So that would be the revenue. And that's what we're going to investigate. Uh, what we did <clears throat> notice is that the maximum uh, revenue or maximums or minimums occur in the corners. So there's three parts that we're going to <clears throat> investigate. Right here, here, and here, circled in red. Those are the most important points in the solution region regarding the objective function. So part A, does the coordinate that represents 90 cans of pop and 150 cans of juice belong in the solution region? So 90 cans of pop, 150 cans of juice. Uh, that would be right here. Is that within the solution region? The answer is no. It's not in that black triangle. So no. It's not in the solution region. Okay. Part B, what coordinates are on the corners of the solution region? Uh, what you're going to find is actually two of them are easier and one of them is slightly more difficult. Uh, your corners here would be, maybe I'll use different colors. <clears throat> this green coordinate would be zero pops and 240. It says label them. So zero pops and 240 juices. So zero pops, 240 juices. Uh, the other point that would be a little bit easier would be this point that's uh, circled in purple. <clears throat> that would be zero and zero, so that's a corner. Zero pops and zero juices. And the more difficult point is this red point here. Um, because it's not right on 60 or 90, or not right on 150 and 180. So you want to ask yourself, this is a little bit tricky, um, but this combination would be exactly where there are 240, if you think about the boundary line, there's exactly 240 juices and pops, and there's exactly twice as many juices than pops. So uh, you could kind of guess and check your way to it. You could ask yourself, okay, is, for example, if I had uh, 60 pops and 180 juices, that equals 240, but there's not twice as many juices as pops. Um, if you investigate this some more, and if you look kind of what's reasonable regarding that point, it's going to be a total of 80 pops and 160 juices. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, because it's twice as many juices and pops and it equals 240. And what you can see here is that it does fall somewhere between 60 and 90, which is 80, and somewhere between 150 and 180, which is 160. So those are your coordinates in the corners. Uh, maybe I'll label them. So this would be 80 and 160. And this would be zero and zero. <clears throat> All right, so the last thing says, what point in the solution region results in a maximum revenue? So we know it's one of the corners. What you want to ask yourself is which of these points, 0, 0, 80, 160, or 0, 240, would result in a maximum revenue? Well, if you sold zero pops and zero juices, uh, it's definitely not going to be a maximum revenue. So the point zero, zero will not be a maximum revenue. You're making no money. So we'll investigate the other two points. <clears throat> so the revenue of the green point, so the revenue of the green point would be no juices. So zero, I'm just using the objective function here. Uh, no juices plus $1.25. <clears throat> no, I'm wrong. It's zero pops. Sorry. Uh, that is 240 juices. So there's no pops. So 240 juices plus $1.25 times the number of pops, and that would be zero. So your revenue here would be $240. So for that point, that green point, your revenue is $240. Okay. Uh, your revenue for the red point would be this. So the revenue is equivalent to the number of juices, and for that point, the number of juices was 160. So 160 plus $1.25 for every pop, and there are 80 pops there, so that would be times 80, which is 160 plus 100, and that revenue would be $260. So which revenue is greater? It's the combination where there are 
<clears throat> right here, 80 pops and 160 juices, and that would be $260. So uh, your maximum revenue, what point results in the maximum revenue? That would be the point 80 and 160. Okay, so in conclusion, it says the value of the objective function for a system of linear inequalities changes throughout the solution region, but in a predictable way. So we notice that the objective function either increases or decreases as you move from left to right or up and down, etc., but it's predictable. The optimum solution, so the maximum or minimum solution, occurs at the intersection or corners of the solution region. So we find that we only really have to investigate the corners in your solution region as far as your objective function goes. <clears throat> And finally, you can calculate each optimal solution by substituting the values of its coordinates into the objective function, which is what I just did. If you substitute those values for those corners into the objective function, you will find the maximum and minimum values.